Greetings, Wargamers. We're your hosts, Trevor, Jay, Josh, and this is Shane Attack. Attack. Attack is sponsored by Discount Games Incorporated. Discount Games Incorporated specializes in customer service, low prices, and prompt shipping. You can find our web store at www.discountgamesinc.com. Chain Attack. I'm your host, Trevor, and my poor puppy is at the vet right now. Mm. Oh, no. First Getting ready for frozen peas, huh? <laughs> this is his first extended stay. Um, I think he likes the vet quite a bit uh, up to this point. So this is the <laughs> beginning of the end. <laughs> uh, I'm Jay, and I, I probably should take my cat to the vet, but I'm kind of... I don't like taking them to vets because... They're, they're generally fine, and it seems like I'm taking them to a shrine of Nurgle where they're <laughs> kind of <laughs> they're going there. But one of well, Saki has has been losing weight, it seems like, but it also seems likely that the vet's gonna be like, well, she's old, so <laughs> you know we don't want to do anything. I don't know. Uh, and I'm Josh, and since we're giving pet updates, my wife is having a conversation. I think mostly to herself here. But like, you know, we were included in the conversation this weekend about actually house training our 10 year old beagle and becoming an indoor pet family, which is probably not strange to my co-hosts, but would be a major paradigm shift for the Wheeler clan. Um, <laughs> can I just be the first on record to say that the horrible? Yeah. All right. Yes. I, I don't know if you're the first on record, but you're probably the first recorded. Well, then it's on record. So would you say there's, the no, internet now. there's no way, there's no good way to do it? With a male? Oh, I don't think so. See, I don't even know that that not, means not that a, it makes a difference. I think it does make a So that, That's how bad of an idea it is. Like, you, we're asking, well, I mean, first of all, that's how bad of an idea it was for me to ever own an app, right? Okay. But, is, has he been fixed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Was he fixed at a very young age? Very, yeah, quite young. Uh one of the things that male dogs do, uh, especially if they haven't been fixed, but some of them, Eve, they, they mark their territory just like a grizzly bear. Or a, oh, interesting. Okay. And it's not necessarily, they're not, they don't consider it, you know, peeing, you know, example, they just mm. put a little squirt here and there. Mm -hmm. and, and at 10 years old, I just, I don't think you're ever going to break that. You can't There's, imagine that he doesn't deeply have that habit, right? Oh yeah. Everywhere he goes, he probably sniffs right. everything. And if the neighbor dog has peed there, he'll. He'll mark over it to try to, you know, make his scent more dominant. I mean, I'm certain he does it everywhere. Yeah, I'm sure you're probably right. And I just, I just don't think that that particular habit of of an older male dog is one that you can break. That one's so ingrained into, you know, thousands of years of evolution that I just, it's, it's for a dog that's a male dog that gets neutered young, they probably don't do it as much. So there's a possibility that maybe he doesn't do it at all. Um, mm, I'm sure I've seen him do it, honestly, outside. I mean, so my my older, he would, my grandfather called him, quote, the pianist dog he'd ever seen. Wow, okay. So anytime we would go anywhere, he would basically get out and mark every plant, every tree, every thing that was not. Mm-hmm was had not been touched before he would make sure he went and all of them and it's just the way he was he liked to mark everything he was fixed so yeah i just don't know that you could but he was i mean he would he'd been raised inside but i just don't know you could i i, I have my doubts that you <laughs> well stay tuned we'll see what comes of it <laughs> i'm not holding my breath personally yeah it's much easier to start on the inside and allow them to go out rather than start on the outside and allow them to come in. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, I guess for news from Discount Games, Inc., um, this week we actually, so we finally have some Asthma Day releases coming out. And so uh, Dormammu and Blade and Moon Knight are releasing this week, uh, and I'm super excited. So huzzah. 
I don't know if uh, I've seen the model for Dormammu. Is it just a really big face with a little planet in front of it that you can... No. No, no he's, he's kind of he's a bipedal a really big form, model. right? Yeah, yeah. So I can't um, land on the planet and say I'm here, whatever. <laughs> I mean, you will say that anyway. <laughs> Inevitably, that's going to happen. I don't think I'll play. Um, I have a comment uh, about the brick and mortar uh, location of Discount Games Inc., which I was oh, privileged. Boy. I was privileged to wander into last weekend, and I want to give apologies to Tom Lehman, who I, for some reason, had just not purchased Res Arcana, but because it was sitting on the shelves at Jay's brick and mortar location, I I was drawn in by it and picked it up and played it this weekend. And dang it, it's it is good. <laughs> I thought that you had said that you had uh, played it and didn't like it that much. I think I think Trevor played it. No, I played it. We we enjoyed it. Okay. I I mean okay. I won't lie. I was like concerned that I wouldn't like it uh, because it seems. Like the pitch, the elevator pitch for it seems way too simple, right? It's like you have a deck of ten cards, and you don't, you honestly don't add, you don't do that much to add to the cards. But there's still a lot of like interplay between the cards, and you know, a lot of cool stuff that happens with it. So what can I say? I'm a fickle, I'm a fickle beast. Okay, Trevor, you can look in the Discord and see the. Oh, I actually, I actually went to Google. The miniature is quite cool. Yeah. 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 It's fantastic. They've done a great job. There's another one coming up soon that uh, will probably be the best sculpt in the game. I don't know. But uh, they've previewed the Hulkbuster, and it's pretty top-notch. Oh, wow. Googles are happening as we... <laughs> it's it's released in Europe, actually. It's one of the ones that uh, I see people playing with it in Europe or people have ordered it from Europe here in America and are painting it up, et cetera. But, and they've also, they're super impressed with the, the model in person. So does it include the smaller Iron Man model? Is, yes. Can it like change into the Hulkbuster? Is that what happens? No, it starts as the Hulkbuster and then it converts into when it would flip over onto its injured side. Uh huh. It, it goes into the smaller Iron Man and he has crap kind of crappy stats in his, uh, on his weakened side injured side uh-huh. but he does have the rule that if he builds up to 10 power then he, he can, can reset over his battery onto, yeah flip over onto the the hulkbuster side mm, that's pretty cool although that seems like it would be fairly due it's in the course of a game. yeah i mean it's it's not likely to happen much at all but it is you know super flavorful the fact super, that it's possible is, is et cetera, rad. right yeah, the, the few times it does happen, you're going to be, like, <laughs> telling your grandkids about it. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be Uncle rico your Marvel Crisis Protocol games. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, and I guess real quick on, on MCP, I, did I, I, I think I told you guys about this. I'm not sure, but were you aware that, like, basically a, a small update was happening with, with Crisis Protocol? I have this memory of you talking about it, yes. I maybe have struck it from my memory because I don't recall that. So it's supposed to be sometime this month, and they're changing a few of the core rules, like... Oh, yes, have that's, I do remember now. ...ten tactics cards instead of eight. Uh-huh. Uh, you you pick your, ta- your um, crisis cards at random, and that's the one that it goes with. Another change they've said is um, the person who... They're, they're changing it, which which I think is great as well. So the person who wins initiative and wins the um, die roll, there there's some changes with like what the second player gets to do, uh, which is also nice. But anyways, if you've been interested in Marvel Crisis Protocol, it's a great time to take a look at it. Um, they're going to have the they're also updating the cards, and so those will be free online by the end of the month. So check that out. So uh, before we get into our main topic, I had a a quick side topic slash question for you guys. So Brian and I are, it's his birthday this weekend. And so we're, we're doing a trip and, you know, as, as part of the plan for it, we're, well, we're, so we're going to Disneyland for his birthday. Like you do. As one does. Yes. Um, And so generally when we go to Disneyland, we'll, we'll do, we'll go in, we'll do something in the parks in the morning, in the afternoon, we'll go back to our hotel and you know 
take a nap or watch TV or read or whatever, right? Because that's generally, uh, I mean, depending on the time of year, it's hotter than I want it to be. And also it's the busiest in the parks, more people than I want to deal with. Okay. And then, then we'll go back into the parks. But so Brian, as I, I think I mentioned in the bonus episode, he's been into the Star Wars MMO a fair bit. And so my current expectation is that he's going to, uh, you know, play some, play some Star Wars on my laptop on the afternoon. And I was trying to figure out, you know, what I would do to entertain myself during my afternoon siesta. And that was what led to my purchase of the Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Whoa. Whoa. What is happening here? <laughs> and so I've, I've purchased, I've downloaded it. I'm, I've, I've gone to like the first shrine. So I'm, I'm just at the start of the game, but uh, it's, it's a huge step for me. Finally going to play Wind Walker, or Breath of the Wild, whatever. I, I always get the names mixed up. You said our words. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but you guys have any uh, any suggestions on on someone who's a noob to to Breath of the Wild? Man, it's been so long since I played it. Uh, I mean, the fact that you're already playing it to me is, is all the step that you need. Because the thing about Breath of the Wild, <laughs> I, I'm saying this just from watching the way I played it, the way that my youngest son has played it in the way a couple of my daughters have played it like they, everybody just kind of goes about it differently right like I, I pay almost no attention to korok seeds for example like i'm all about like give me some sweet sweet quests but i do get sort of dragged off on, into sh- different shrines occasionally you know but like then my son is like must have all the korok seeds right <laughs> um so my only recommendation um don't I guess don't let any one particular quest um, get you bogged down. Like if 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 for whatever reason you read the don't description, because of well, I'm I'm saying like don't be afraid to go or something find, else. Go find no, go find an online guide or whatever. So oh, I'll okay. give you an, I'll give you an example. There's um, you'll get there because it's not very deep of the game, but there's there is a um, you go into one of the towns, one of the early towns, and one of the guys there's like. My chickens got out overnight. Will you help me find my chicken? And there's six chickens hidden or eight chickens hidden around the town. And I, it was the quest that sort of, I put the game down and didn't come back to. When I came back to, I'm like, oh, I'm still on this stupid chicken mission. And so I like, I shut it off. And then eventually when I did go back and my daughter was sitting and she's like, oh, you're on the, you know, you have to gather all the chickens. And I'm like, yeah, I'm sick and tired of trying to find the chickens. I had gone like, way beyond the the, <laughs> the scope the, of the quest. Correct. Like I'd been, you know, searching through the mountains or around the town. You know, the, the quest is basically the chickens are all inside the town. But I, I thought I'd looked everywhere. And my daughter's like, no, no, where have you been? And we started going through. And she's like, you're missing the one that's on the roof of that house right over. Like, I don't think so. I think I've been over to that house. Just trust me. So I, <laughs> I love it. Yeah. So anyway, I get to the top of the house and of course there's the chicken. So anyway, my point being is that some of the missions, maybe the descriptions aren't quite as good as they, or maybe they're mm-hmm. little, I wouldn't, I mean, most of them are not like that, but every once in a while, I remember re- reading one where it was like, basically it said, follow the road and turn left, go over the blah, blah. And I, I basically sort of the description and got lost and thought that the town was a lot closer than it really was. And had I actually followed the description, you know, asked somebody else, I would have saved myself, you know, two hours worth of exploring, which I enjoyed. And so I'm not, I'm not saying you shouldn't do that, but if you're getting frustrated, there's plenty of guides. So. Especially at this point, since Jay's basically waited until the next millennia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, did you guys, I, did you guys both beat the game? Yes. Oh, I just, I, just barely oh. Finished. I wasn't like trying to shame Trevor. I thought the answer was, I thought the answer was supposed to give was yes there. Jeez. Uh, Josh, <laughs> see the pre ramble. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> I, I will go back eventually and finish it. The problem is, is that the switch is most coveted of all game systems this house yeah yeah okay and so getting time on it is it's quite difficult my my middle child has beaten it my oldest child has not because she doesn't want to finish doesn't it. want to right yeah. yeah she doesn't want to finish it so um she's done basically everything and she still goes in and plays all the time doing all kinds of crap. so I, I bought them hyrule warriors which i think is like this okay. and they're all they're all playing through that right now completely different type of game set in the same year same character even more so than a direct breath of the world. So I'm, I'm excited to see how you feel about it. One of the coolest things that I enjoyed the most was the shrines. 
and the, the the puzzles of figuring them out. And some of them, yeah, they're a ton of fun. Yeah, they're a ton of fun. Some of them are a little twitchier than I would like them to be, um, mm. but for the most part, they're not bad. There is one that um, when you get to it, I want to know uh, how you feel about it. Uh, my daughter basically made me feel like an idiot. <laughs> Josh knows the one I'm probably talking about. I don't um, know why that gives me such delight that your daughter made you feel like an idiot, but yeah, I get it. There, there was, there's, there's one that's sort of like the labyrinth game. Do you know the one I'm talking about, Josh? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I won't spoil it for for Jay, but my daughter made I like I tried for forever, and she's just like, "Why didn't you just do this, Dad?" And I was like, <sighs> <laughs> "So anyway." All right. Well. Let's let's move into our main segment then. So we have all now watched Star Wars Visions, and we're going to grade that. Uh, do we want? I guess let's let's start talking about it before we do the the grading. Okay. Uh, so Star Wars Visions is a series that's on Disney Plus. It is a bunch of one shots essentially uh, being done by various uh, anime studios. Yeah, anime studios. And so they all have very unique styles and storytelling approaches. So I, that's probably the best for the, the pitch. Am I missing anything? I think that's basically it. They were much shorter than I expected them to be. I'm adding that to the pitch. Whether that's good or bad, I can't say. What What did you expect them? Like, what, what were you Like, like I mean, you know, a 24-minute, a 30-minute kind of episode kind of thing? Some Some of them were, right? Uh, I, I will look at the run times, but I feel like there's not there. If there is one, it's maybe only one that's longer than like 17 minutes. Huh. Let me see if I can find that. Well, I, I can find it. I mean, I, I've, I can pull up Disney really fast. Um, I expected the part, so it, I guess maybe. Yeah. I think I probably just had the wrong expectations. Uh huh. Jay, did you get what you expected? Um, I guess. The thing that I didn't expect was, I guess, how, I guess I'll say the range and quality of the mm. shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quality um, of writing, animation, all of the above? Um, Yeah, all of the above, although I would probably say writing or so than. So the longest one is 23 minutes. The shortest one is 14. Yeah. Ironically, the longest one is one of my favorites, too. Spoilers. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll, I think I've mentioned this before, but I also made a grave error with this show. Okay. Okay. So I, and I guess we can start talking some about which ones are we liked the best or didn't or whatever, because this kind of leads into that. But I watched the first one on my own, and I love the first one. It might be my favorite of the entire series. It's definitely top three for me. So it, you're saying it ended up setting a, a, an expectation for you for all the rest. No, of it. no, oh, the no. story continues. So oh, okay, <laughs> I watched the first one on my own, and then the next day, Brian and I were going to watch something uh, while we were eating dinner, and so went to number two, and that was Brian's first exposure to the show was number two, <laughs> and. <laughs> And number two is not good, <laughs> in my opinion. Like I don't, I don't think it probably should have been included. In- you feel you feel no redeeming qualities out of number two. Yes, that's. I, I think that's fair. Um, I kind of feel like um, my co-hosts had seen it before I had and gave me. I think you set my expectations appropriately. Too. Appropriately low. Yeah. So it, yeah, so it didn't end up bothering me that much. I was like, okay, that was interesting. <laughs> Yeah, I did like, and I guess I probably wouldn't feel as bad also if it had been like, I mean, how many are there total? Nine, not nine. Yeah. Nine. So it feels like this should have been number seven, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah. If it, if it hadn't like, yeah, I'm trying to, I think it, it, I mean, it probably is my least favorite of the episodes. Let me think here. Which one? The, uh, Tatooine Rhapsody or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. That's, um, th- that's my least favorite. Bye. A long margin. So then we watched number three, the twins, and uh, at that point, Brian was like, "Okay, are, are we done here?" <laughs> 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 because he, I, did, he didn't like the own. twins either. Um, 
yeah, I don't. Well, he was just. I didn't Flowers love the twins, Black Green so Rhapsody. I mean, I, I, I'm fine if like the twin position a whole. It was. It's kind of funny to me. One of my so a lot of my friends have like very divergent opinions on this. Like one of my friends thinks this is probably his favorite show ever, this anthology. Um, okay. Another one of my friends. Yeah. Right. I mean, I, <laughs> another I season two. I want to go on the record here before we get much further into grading. Yeah. His his favorite his favorite one is the twins, and I asked him why, and he's like, well, because it's basically the one that's like the most ridiculous anime tropey, et cetera, out of all of them. And so, you know, I don't know. I, I think that maybe I might be. Uh, are we old men? Are, not... we, are we like shaking fists at clouds right now, Jay? Is that what's happening? Well, no, I'm. Like, I still enjoyed it, but I don't think that I'm going to enjoy this as he's, like, hardcore into anime. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. And maybe I'm wrong on that. I don't know. And what what what, what did you guys think? Um, so I... Let me just preface everything by saying this is something that I never thought we would see. Right. And and something that, like, I'm, I'm be, it sounds like I'm being kind of critical of it, but I'm also super happy that this got made. Yeah. I mean, uh, that's my thing is there's, there's a bunch of these that I thought were plain awful that yeah. I hated but that doesn't mean i don't want more of it that's it just, interesting i it just I've, okay it just, it just means that the ones that i didn't like didn't resonate with. but the star wars universe too many times goes back to the exact same yeah. well i don't want that i think the universe has a lot of depth and some of the best properties outside of the you know movies when you get into the books and the comics and everything else some of the best properties don't go back to the well and these are ideas that i think have a potential to take it in new directions so that's why i love it and i would love to see more of it but you know that said uh do i want more tob1 or whatever that the the you know baby <laughs> The, uh, the, chi- the child android. Oh, the yeah. droid think, Jedi. The droid hell Jedi. Hell no, I don't want yeah, any more that of that. that was rough. <laughs> yeah, don't bring that thing near me ever again. But <laughs> I'm certain there will be something like it in the next scene that I will also do. But that's okay. I don't, you know, there because there was some pretty cool stuff here. Are any of these so great that I'm like, okay, this needs to be part of canon? Probably not. But I don't know that they were given the amount of time and effort that a full fee. They were kind of, hey, we're given the opportunity to do something. Let's try something cool. Let's do it. And there's some fun ideas here, although some of them don't feel like they're fully fleshed out. Yeah. So I, I am kind of curious. What what would you guys say are your um, top three episodes? Uh, top three for me, I'm going to say um, The Duel, The Ninth Jedi, and I think The Elder. Because I like when the villain is a cranky old man. <laughs> uh, my my top three is identical to Josh. <laughs> I, in that same like, order? Like in the order I just um, said? No, I'm not okay. sure. I, might, I would probably put the Elder as either first or second. Ninth Jedi would be probably be third. And then the Duel would be first or second. So the Duel I really is... Liked, I liked the Padawan and Master, the Elder, quite a bit as yeah, well. Besides yeah, yeah. The cranky yeah. old man part. Yeah, so the Padawan and the, the Master, most favorite part of that episode. Um, I don't know if it's my, I don't know if I'm ready to actually rank them, but but I did not, the duel is not my top three. I actually like mm. the Village the village Bride. Um, yeah, I like that one as well, yeah. Um, probably more than that. So for me, it's good, and I don't, I don't want, these aren't the order, but the Elder, uh, the Ninth Jedi, and the Village Bride are probably my top three. Um, I really enjoyed uh, episode eight. I don't know how to say that, Lop and Ode. Until near the end and then i like the last mm. the one with the I, rabbit I right rabbit that's what one of the characters seemed like a rabbit to me in la Pinocchio. <laughs> maybe i'm thinking of the wrong one. Oh, which one are you thinking of what well, happens at the end here? oh Josh. yeah no no that's the wrong one i'm thinking of a different one i i did enjoy that one um i must be thinking of there was one where um there was a old jedi that had been a friend of the family was helping the must be the last one akariri yeah akariri yeah yeah, the, they came back because the like lady of the house had murdered the lord and had become a Sith. Anyway, I, I yeah, actually, that like... yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what I. That is that one. Yeah, I think so. I, I did. So you like that up until what? Uh, the last like five minutes, it went off the rails and then made no sense. Like oh. it was just kind of weird. The ending did not. It didn't go where I thought it was. It felt like it felt like they'd ran out of time to write. Okay, kind of like, we'll just throw an ending in here. Cram it in, baby. Yeah, like I'm like, okay, this story has some some teeth to it, and then all of a sudden they're like, no, we're gonna make a nonsensical ending. Here you go. And, I was like, and go. 
And I'm like, oh, wait, but it's 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 also it's one of the short ones. It's 14 minutes. Um, and it really felt like it was going to take, you know, like it was going to be one of the 20 minutes. And then all of a sudden the thing goes from something interesting to, you know, going completely like it's one of those adventures where I'm playing where I'm running as the GM and I didn't plan far enough ahead and the players don't want to stop. And so I come up with something at the last second and the players are like, that makes sense. Why would he do that? And I'm Isn't like, that when you say don't question the DM? <laughs> yeah, well, that's what I got from from that episode. Don't mm. question. <laughs> it's fair because it made no sense anyway so uh the la Pinocho one actually that one's one i'm not remembering but it is the one with the like the rabbit jedi in it yeah yeah well are we ready to move on to grading sure absolutely okay Josh, so category design so i'm going to take this from a slightly different perspective and go to the disney studio the office where this decision was made where it got green lit correct i'm going to give it a 10 from there nice because I think it's a, I think that this sort of thing, especially from established properties, needs to happen more often. And I just think it's really cool. If I have to judge the series from that, it's really hard because there's some that are just well, because exactly what we said, just the yeah, the I mean, variety and quality. Right? Yeah, the range and quality is really high. <laughs> yeah, and there's some that like I, I kid you not, when I finished the Tob one one. Um, and also yeah, when I finished yeah. the Tatooine Rhapsody one. I love that you yeah. hate that one so much. <laughs> I didn't. I didn't want to go on. I'm like, I didn't like was... Tatooine Rhapsody one that very much, but like the Tob one one did not offend my sense oh, of didn't... mortality. Yeah, well, I mean, you like me Bluey up. as Why? well, so what can you say? I don't. Oh, uh, that's fair. No, no, Bluey oh. is funny. This was <laughs> none of us. That's true. It was not funny. It was like I just. I'm like, if this is what. If this is what the possibility of the next three episodes are, I don't know that I want to continue. <laughs> yeah, Luckily, I guess maybe my my statement about the placement of Tatooine Rhapsody was maybe false then. If, if it's going to lead people to quit the uh, series or if I got slotted later. But Oh, yeah, that's yeah, true. I don't, I don't know. It's hard to know when to hit him with the inertia. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, they were short mm-hmm. enough that, I, that we made it past that one pretty quick. Um, so we watched the yeah. first four four episodes in the first night. So we finished on the Village Bride, and like, oh yeah, we can do some more of this. And I, I was certainly excited after the Tatooine Rhapsody kind of. I'm like, okay, well, you know, certainly there's going to be another duel or something. And indeed, there was. It was called The Elder. Um, so for design, I'm going to split the difference because I like the way Trevor's talking about. It. I think it is fair to say a ten for them, you know, taking the chance and doing something like this with their established property. Um. But I, I'm going to give it like a six, you know, if you make them all stand on their own. So I'm just going to average th- those two and say my, my number is an eight for design overall. Yeah, I mean, if I'm going to make them stand all on their own, truly, there's only there's less than half of them I really liked. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give it less than half a score and call it. <laughs> <laughs> Our numbers are all over. I love it. Brilliant. Brilliant. Um, Jay? Like there's... So I want to say eight because I'm just such a fucking fanboy. Uh, <laughs> but wow, eight is were, the fanboy number. Well, and there's I do feel like the ones that were good were really good, and I enjoyed them quite a bit. But there were also there was there were more times than I would have liked where I was like, this is okay. kind of dragging on. WTH, or, mate. I'm ready for the next episode, etc. So I'll I'll probably go with the six, but I will also agree with. Uh, Trevor, that I'm ten on ten on green lighting. This. <laughs> I like it. Okay, next uh, category. Time goes. time management. I feel like we've addressed this one a little bit in the way we were talking about, you know, like some of them you expecting them to go a little longer and them getting cut off too quick. Uh, for me, this is honestly a super high number though because it's they're like just the right length for me to a like bite size morsel. Yes, and. And to basically be able to like suck my family into watching them later with me, you know, and not it just did not being a very big commitment. So I, I like that quite a bit. What's your number? I'm gonna ah, I'm gonna say nine, honestly, because short and sweet is just right for me. I think I'll go with six again, just because there were it felt like there were too many times where it was I was struggling to have it hold my attention. Okay, Trevor. Yeah, it's interesting to me. I. Does it, do you guys know anything about like about how it was relent or how much money was? I mean, were they just given the opportunity and they had to pay for it themselves? Or, yeah, right. Or did they like audition to 
be able to do it or that kind of stuff? Yeah, I'm I'm sort of wondering. I don't know enough about anime studios, but some of these, I'm just wondering if, like, you know, I'm wondering had they been given a larger budget, had would the writing be better? Because one of the things about anime is, yes, a lot of times they're kind of crazy or weird or strange, but the good ones have amazing writing. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like mm-hmm. you just oh, yeah. oh, you yeah. sit down and you're like, man, this is weird, but I'm loving it. And that was not the case on a lot of these episodes. I was like, man, this is weird, but I am not loving. It. Yeah. So yeah. I don't I don't know if you know maybe anyway. I struggled with the gems. I could go back and rewatch, but the other ones were. I had to rewatch one of them four times. Maybe I think it was La Panacho. <laughs> so to be like, don't... what did I just watch? Kind of thing. No, I just kept falling asleep. <laughs> Like my, I, we watched it with my wife and my daughter, and they watched it all the way to the end. And then they're like, "You're gonna have to rewatch it, aren't you?" And I'm like, "Yeah, sorry." And I, I turn it back on, play it again. I'd be, I'd maybe make it two or three more minutes into it, and then I'd fall asleep again. I literally watched it four times that is... before I finished. So for me, if they were much longer and I had to deal with that sort of varying quality, I don't, I don't think I went through. So. I guess the, the the length is probably appropriate for the quality, but I want them. To, yeah, right. But yeah, I'm going to say maybe five, slightly okay. below average. Okay, next Repe- category. Repeatability. Uh, I give this one pretty high marks because I'm looking forward to, like I said, watching it with family again, uh, which is high praise for me for a show and or movie, right? I'm, I'm going to give it a, I'm going to give it a seven repeatability, I think. Trevor, you've clearly watched several of them repeatedly already. <laughs> uh, yeah, but um, I'll be honest. If I ever go back and rewatch it, there's I will skip. I have no desire to watch several. Just I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll only yeah, watch full on like Toby is the episode we do not speak of kind of thing, right? Yes. <laughs> I I will not watch that. I will not watch Akiri, the last one. Aki. Akariri. Yeah, who knows? I will not watch Tadwee Rhapsody, and I don't think I'll watch the. Tw- uh, honestly, I'd probably just watch you know, one or two. But... So, so there are some individual episodes that definitely rank higher for you on the repeatability scale. That's what I'm hearing. I mean, the truth is, is I don't know that the payoff is enough for me to go back. Okay. They're they're kind of they're they're neat. They were fun for the one time, but they're not fleshed out enough for me to have a to really go back and watch them. If if it was a Let's see the ninth Jedi was episode two or three of a, mm-hmm. you know, a, a 24 episode, you know, 23 minute long each episode anime. I would guarantee to go back, and, but a single episode out of that whole season and don't get the remainder of the story or the just a small chunk of it. Yeah, I just don't have enough desire to, to maybe the the proper term is I don't have enough bandwidth. There's other things. My time sure, about. sure. That makes sense. So. I'm going to give it fairly low with the idea that I could change it. If any of these were actually made with series, I would be more than go back and read. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. If they made a, the ninth Jedi season, I absolutely watch that in all the episodes in the series. So you said uh, your number is going to be fairly low. So what is it, Trevor? I mean, for me, yeah. the ch- chance of not good. I mean, I'll, I'll rewatch some pretty crappy shows. <laughs> <laughs> so this is really damning. With faint praise here. Yeah, I mean, I'm thinking like a two, three, maybe. It's just oh, well. I, I don't okay. have a lot of right. desire to go back and rewatch them. I'll probably Jay. say a five. Okay. Uh, we're on to fun. Uh, I mean, for me, the moments that were fun were like a freaking ton of fun. Loved Ninth Jedi. Loved the Elder. I, I I think it's still pretty high for me. I'm gonna give I'm gonna give that a seven too. I don't know why I'm allowing myself to use sevens today. Don't ask me. <laughs> The funny thing um, is some I'll of the ones I yeah. okay. The funny thing is some of the ones that I hated, I probably wouldn't have hated them that much if they were a different setting. Oh, interesting. Okay. The like, Star Warsiness of them poisoned. Huh? Yeah, I mean I'm 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 simultaneously praising them for getting outside the box and at the same time damning them too far outside the box. This is uh, <laughs> is this like hating card games? Is that what's happening right now, Trevor? I don't know, but um yeah. I found them quite fun. The idea, I'm actually going to give a fairly high rate. Like I said, this is something I never thought we would see. I And while this was under George Lucas, I just don't think this is something we would have seen. Yeah, well, I think that's fair. Yeah, because I mean, I think it's hard, would have been hard for him to see the his, value baby, in it. his right. baby potentially butchered the way that Toby did. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <my. laughs> 
Um, <laughs> I can't although, believe you hate the droid Jedi more than you hate the microphone lightsaber. Uh, no, I hate that one about equal. <laughs> um, the funny thing is, is he's like the type to like he probably liked it. You're saying George Lucas probably did? Yeah, he's the type to. That's funny. Anyway, it, it, I think overall this the fun was fairly. This is the type of thing about your favorite property, so I'm gonna say it's right. probably, probably a seven or. Jay, where were you at on the fun? Um, I think I said six. Okay, that's right. I think you did. Okay, so overall, I, I can't remember where I saw on the internet it was a meme or something that said, like, they should have called Visions, like, Star Wars What If. And <laughs> I, I'm not sure how I feel about that pitch or not, but I thought it was sort of just a clever comment more than anything. I li- actually like it as a marketing, right? I think it's actually, I think they, they pro- properly labeled it. Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, anyway, my, having said all that, I think my overall is uh, I'm going to stick with the seven. I think it's a seven. I think it's fun. I think it was a good first effort. Uh, and I should look at what did I give? What if? Oh, also a seven. <laughs> I got sucked in by my own rhetoric. I'm clearly a Star <laughs> Wars fanboy. It is kind of an interesting compare contrast. I, I I personally feel like what if was significantly better than Vision. Yeah, yeah. I think that too. Yeah. So I should actually probably give a lower number over here. What if this had tied in? Or you in? should have given better to what if. Uh, okay, that's fair. <laughs> you guys probably caught me in a mood or something. I don't know. Oh, yeah. I, you did, actually. You caught me after I, I had watched the Doctor Strange what if with uh, my family. Remember? Yeah, yeah. That was the problem. So, you know, I hate to be harsh, but the overall quality is not that great. I Like I said, I'm not going to go back and rewatch it. It's, it's the type of thing that, it, like, if if – Somebody, you know, from Disney called me up and said, hey, you were talking bad about our visions. I would be like gushing to them. Over. <laughs> uh, please. I'm sorry I spoke ill of your property. Please, please make more. Please make more. <laughs> but just none with Toby, T-O-B-1 in them. <laughs> you sons of guns. So it's a weird, it's a weird feeling. I, I would say that this is a fairly below average property, even on any streaming service you can find the hits and misses if you were to tell me you know ask me what the whole season is i'd call it a miss overall but the thing is is it's not one property it's not one series of shows right so there's definitely ones among them i absolutely um i am probably oh, overall with the six it's trending towards this <laughs> a six plus a d plus man i'm surprised by all this you are yeah i mean i yeah I guess that's the danger of making potpourri. Yeah, it kind of is. But I want more potpourri because yeah, I, love, yeah. I, love to, I love to pick and choose the smells I like. Right, yeah. yeah. All right, well, um, I guess to wrap things out, uh, this, I'm, I'm guessing we might do a future episode on this, but I started the tutorial of um, Bloomhaven Digital. Oh, exciting. And I'm... I'm I'm thinking of trying to set up a weekly game with some friends that moved to Ohio, but um, I then like I said I, I expect we're going to do a full grade of this uh, in an episode. But I know you guys have been playing it some. What's been your uh, impression so far? Well, I can't remember if we talked about it on the air, but I mean for me it's it's a really incredible implementation of the game. Like it's really well done. Um, it is. It's much harder than I remember it, like the game. And maybe I like, maybe I cheat or something when I don't have the computer arbitrating so, the rules. I don't know. No, so here's one of the things I'm going to, and yeah, we'll get into it more later. But um, I've, I'm currently playing in four different campaigns one solo, one with Josh and his father, one with um, some, some other friends, Rick and Adrian, and then um, one with my son. And I've played the most solo, obviously. You can play those. You know. Whenever. It's a, it's, yeah, it's the type of game. It's also because it's a very, very, you know, like, turn-based, but even more so, to the point where I can just walk away, go eat dinner, come back, take my next turn. You mean? Right, right, right. Yeah. But the game that I'm playing solo, I've completed 15 missions, something like that. And or it might be more than that. I think it's more than that. But anyway, one of my characters had the personal goal to exhaust himself 12 times. Oh, my lands. And he's already retired because the difficulty yeah, feels just very different. And here's my here's my thought or the reason why it is. Because the game rules tell you that if there are two options, the players choose. 
the digital implementation does not give you that option. It chooses. And when the players choose, they're obviously going to choose the thing that is most advantageous for them. When the digital game chooses, it chooses the most advantageous for it. That dirty AI. And that may not sound like much, but I think it's I think it's a really big deal. Like there's there's a lot of times where especially in larger games where there's just there's things that the players can do that are well within the rules that will screw the AI over. And the AI in the digital limitation never does those things. <laughs> and I'm I'm basically at the point where I'm like I have zero interest in buying the physical copy of Frosthaven because <laughs> I'll just because you've the started digital playing version. the digital implementation. I think you're yeah, smart. Yeah, there's there's I like I have like negative zero point like negative numbers interest in playing uh, a physical version of Gloomhaven. So, um, have, I don't. How far did you get, Jay? Did you guys think about a third or half way, maybe? About how many classes do you think you had on? I I think most of us were on our second or third. Okay. So in the game that I played, I think we were, most of us were on our third, and one of us, one guy was on his fifth. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't think we got I don't, we're near the end. Anyway, right, I'm wondering, because yeah. the thing is, is I don't think I'm ever going to fit the physical copy of Gloomhaven. Oh, yeah. I'm pretty sure I am going to finish the digital copy. Not with any of the well, groups I mentioned. I think, yeah, you'll, you'll get to two-thirds. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think it's finished. It's- yeah, I should get back to doing solo. The, the only times I've played now, I played one time solo, and then the only other times I've played, I end up playing with my dad, or the one time I got to play with you, Trevor. And, and the problem is that's like fracturing my time spent. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, so. it's hard to pull together. I mean, it's just as hard. To, uh, I don't want to say it's worse, but it's definitely just as hard as getting them at the table. For the, the- it is for me. I'm such a freaking old man. I mean, that. <laughs> it, it, back to Jay's real time, your comment about watching me real time descend into cranky you know seniorhood uh that's one where i manifest it all the time i know i know the game with my son and i he just he'll lose lose interest yeah oh sure sure all right but well i want to see the end and this is how it's going to happen so yeah yeah that's correct um i guess let us know what you guys think of visions and let us know what your experience has been with Gloomhaven haven digital so far